gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for life of Kuan, for the impact and legacy that he has left behind. And right now, Lord God, as we proceed with this Zoom celebration, Lord God, we pray for your blessing on every aspect, on all those who would speak, on all those who would share, on the videos that would be shown, that everything would be done to your honor and glory, and that memory of Juan Capote would be inspiration and motivation for us as we continue waiting for Jesus to come, when we shall see him again. Amen. Um, now we've got Pastor Rodriguez here with you. So Pastor Rodriguez, uh, we invite you again to offer another prayer and please say a few words for all those gathered here. And as you speak, uh, I will just pan through to show all the people present. Okay, so um, I am uh, very pleased that I am able to be with you today here. Uh, of course, I am in Florida, and uh, I know all the people are in other places, but uh, I would like to pray. Yeah, well, what um, at some point, I have a poem that I wrote for our brother Juan, and um, I will have to read it in Spanish, or whoever understands Spanish. Uh, it's going to be maybe impossible to translate it, but uh, at, at that point, I, I would like to do just uh, read the poem in Spanish. But at this time, I, I'm going to pray in English, as you requested, okay? Can we pray? Yes, Let's pray. thank you. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be together today to celebrate the life of this man who has left a legacy of uh, missionary work. Not only that, but also a legacy for the families and also father we are not here only to celebrate but to comfort one another uh, which is very important at this point and also we are here to reaffirm our hope in Jesus's return and father we know that you are with us and we thank you for that and uh, from now on we ask you to stay with us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm going to share my screen and I invite you to mute yourself but sing.
Janet had sent the eulogy in video segments. So again, she shared that she would get all emotional. So she wants us to be able to watch and see the eulogy on video. It's hard to talk about my father's life. It's hard to talk about my father at all. Knowing after he has passed away. But I'll do my best. I would like to thank everyone that has sent their condolence and their nice and beautiful messages to us. I would like to thank all the phone calls given to us. It's, it's peaceful to know he was loved by so many people. I could talk about a lot of wonderful things about my dad and I probably would not end soon. Um, his life would be like a movie. Who is Juan Alberto Capote? That's easy. He was Isabel's love of her life. He was Isabel everything. And that's how he was known by Juan Isabel. <laughs> I gather stories from people in his um, childhood and past and all that. And I got to know my father very well now. Um, he was a very young spiritual counsel. He was a very young, at age 20, he was the youth group leader. At age 21, he was the youngest elder of the church. And my mom was saying, and he was so serious when he had to talk about God. He turned so serious and she liked that. Um, he had character and was serious about everything that had to do with God. The youth remember him like a very active man, a very um, spiritual man. And they were always happy around him. Some of them became pastors because of his liturgy. Um, when I was born, he was working in the field and a butterfly laid on his hand, a yellow butterfly. And he, the, he would try to let go of the butterfly and it wouldn't let go. So he said, oh, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. My wife is in labor and my child has been born and because of this butterfly i know it's a girl <laughs> it's nice to know uh, dad received a message i was the only girl in my house and the middle child so by that i mean i was very very spoiled my dad treat me like a princess and i was very much spoiled at him. I remember one time when um, I had an argument with my brother and my youngest brother, Alex. Um, we argue a bit. And then my oldest brother, Luis, he went and told dad, hey, dad, Janet just hit Alex. And then he said, how could you come to me and gossip about your sister? Go to your room. And he went to his room. And then Alex came back and said, Dad, that's not fair. My sister argued with me, and you sent Luis to his room. That's not fair. And he said, well, if you can't take a punch from your sister, go to your room. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't fair, but it, everybody learned there that I could get away with anything, and I was Dad's favorite. But another thing they actually learn is that my brothers were there to protect me no matter what I did, no matter what happened, they were there to protect me. And the second thing they learn is that they were supposed to solve their problems, our problems among each other and not go gossiping to dad about things that happened. They learned that they're supposed to be a problem solver 
and be a helper and a protector for me. Uh, I thank Dad for that. I don't think my brothers were too happy, but... Um, there was another time to mention a few. My car, my car broke down. And that's something that usually happens in a girl's life because we are not mechanics and we we call dad, right? So then I called dad and said, Dad, I my car broke down here close to Walmart. Can you come help me? And he said, Sure. And then I asked Dad one quick question. Before I called you, what were you doing? And he said, you won't believe me. I was praying for you. I just finished saying amen and you call. <laughs> so comforting to know he prayed for every one of us. He prayed for all his children all the time. Who was Juan Capote? Well, Juan Capote was the chef. He was everybody's chef. He was the man who would make a meal in a minute and provide for everyone. Um, everybody that would come to Juan's house would never leave hungry. His first word would, would be, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? You want me to prepare something for you to eat? That was his word. One day I remember that um, visitors came over and they were in the kitchen and then my mom came to um, and she said, oh my goodness, more people are coming. What am I going to do? Well, if you heard of a woman that will make rice in the microwave in three minutes, that would be my mom. But for sure, you would come and eat it. My house was like the campground of the church everybody that would friends and family that would come over the couch would be a bed and the floor would be a campground everybody would stay everybody coming from out of town from far away well anywhere my house was also known a place of worship that was our second church a place we would go eat after church a place where um, we would gather all the meetings, youth meetings, and a prayer meeting, a prayer week. Everything was, it was second church to us. That's the place where you were worship. It's, dad was very, very, mom and dad, but dad was very spiritual. He was always giving marriage counseling. He was always giving um, a spiritual, everywhere he would go. Anywhere, he would always talk about God. He would always talk about how important it is to give your life to God. It was not only known as a place of worship. It was also known as a town's restaurant. Everybody would eat at my house. That's That was because he was the chef. When he was between 15 years old and 18 years old, he went to the army. And in the army, he chose to be the chef. He knows everybody would love him because he would be the chef, right? So it was, he had to cook for 500 men at like a campfire outside stove kind of thing on the wood. So cooking for him since he was 15 was normal. He, that's the next best thing he would know to do in every camp meeting in, at his country and Everywhere he would be the, the chef. So that's the best thing he would do. Um, I could say the dad had a million friends. I could easily say he had a million friends. Um, just to mention in town, in the Arabic community, in every store in from Windsor to Leamington, just mention my dad and you, uh, any son or daughter of Juan Capote would take uh, something to drink for free. If we would go to a restaurant, we, we get free food because we are Juan Capote's sons and daughter. And he said, whoever is a friend of Juan is a friend of mine. And I thank the 
Arabic community and all his friends for all the free food we've had. I appreciate it very much. Um, that's how well Juan was loved. That's everybody showed him how much he was loved. I appreciate that too. Um, apparently, the lady in the bank, I can't believe he died. The lady in the funeral, the grave, anywhere we would tell them, no one would believe. It's hard to believe, honestly. It's hard to believe he, he left so quickly. But unfortunately to say, he knew. He knew he was going to die. He went to his cardiologist and he said, Juan, your kidneys are starting to fail. If you don't do anything about it, if you don't get dialysis, you would have a month to two to live. It's so sad. <laughs> and he said, I don't want dialysis. I am ready. I want to live. And um, he didn't tell anyone. He didn't tell anyone. He started getting prepared because he was going home. He made a list. 28 friends. He started calling them. He said, um, he started saying goodbye to all his friends. This one friend of his called from Florida. His name is Domingo. And my dad said, Hey, you were 10 on my list. Dad had a list of 28 people, right? You're 10 on my list. You call a little early. But anyways, let's talk. So they started talking and talking and talking. And um, I heard from his cousin, Jose Luis, that he ended the conversation really weird. That's what they said. He said, well, listen, I'm not going to call you again. This is the last time I'm going to call you. And it was nice to be your friend. And he ended the conversation like that. Later on, we find out that he was actually saying goodbye. That was his way of saying goodbye. So if you receive a phone call from Juan Capote before he died, you were on the list. I would like to thank everybody for loving my dad so much. It's hard. We received the last phone call, that famous last phone call they give now to to show you a video of your family because they're passing away and that's it you you don't know anything else after that that's the hardest thing a person can do just receive a simple call phone call and say goodbye that's it just like dad was saying goodbye to everybody we also received the last phone call i wasn't there it was alex and dad said goodbye I'm proud of my three kids. You were my honor. I'm proud of all of you. I am happy that you all follow Jesus like I taught you. Continue the line. I'm proud of all my grandchildren. My seven grandchildren are the best. I enjoy being with your grandfather for all of you. And then Alex, he sent that f video without any audio to me. And I was upset. I go, no. I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to go see dad. He can't just die like that. Well, of course, they kicked me out of the hospital twice. And then I went to Alex's house and he said, okay, Alex. Excuse me. Okay, Alex. Um... What are we going to do? This is not fair. So Alex said, guess what? Let's call the hospital one more time to see how he's doing. Maybe he's getting better. So he called the doctor at the hospital and uh, they said, well, he needs dialysis. Do you guys agree on 
this and that. And then she goes, oh, he's awake. You guys could talk to him now. Okay, so he saw me and he said, Janet, Janet, I was just thinking about you. I was so worried. Um, I'm so happy to see you. And then he said, Janet, I want you to not cry and understand. I want to go. I'm ready. God is coming and I'm ready. Let me go. And I go, okay, Dad, fine. Have your way and God bless you and this and that. So we hang up. And then five minutes later, the hospital call. Janet, come quickly to the hospital. Your dad wants to be with you. That was so wonderful. That was so wonderful. When I went to the hospital, he was so happy to see me. And I was so happy to see him too. And I said, Dad, I might cry later. And I know this is going to be sad, but I'm so happy to see you. I cannot be anything but happy. And then for one hour, Dad had complete health. His voice was strong. He, he's, he looked healthy. So we start calling people. And he said, let me talk to Luis. Okay. He called Luis. He said his goodbyes. They talk. Okay. Um, Marta Lara called. He talked to her. Another friend from Cayman Island. It's like a very close friend called. He talked to her. And then he said, well, let me talk to my grandchildren. I go, yeah, no problem. Judy called. He talked to her. And then he said, let me talk to Kayla. Hey, let me talk to Junior. Okay. He talked to Alex and he said goodbye to all the little ones. He said hi kids and goodbye kids and all this. So for one hour he had complete health to talk about the last things he wanted to say to us and to say a proper goodbye. I saw him pass away. I was standing in front of him and I said, he was fall. He was completely asleep. He was falling asleep. He was actually snoring. I stand in front of him and he was snoring, <laughs> snoring. And that's it. He stopped snoring. My dad passed away in complete peace, complete peace. I would say that's the way we all wish we could die. Like, in our sleep, I, a snoring like it's it's so wonderful. So what I could lastly say, what Dad wanted was all of us to realize that we should follow Jesus. We should be an example of a good Christian everywhere we go, and we should follow Jesus because He's gonna call our names. And he's going to come in his second coming to pick us up and take us home. That is awaiting Jesus' resurrection. God bless you all. Thank you. Friends, it was wonderful to hear from Janet sharing. There are 72 households tuning in from all over the world right now. If we would meet in person, this would be one filled up church. I wanted to turn microphone to Louise Capote. Louise, if you could unmute yourself. And uh, I'd like to give you the opportunity to talk about people who've sent their condolences, uh, people who shared from afar, who may not be able to be with us on Zoom. Now, I received a PowerPoint, so if uh, you would advise me to play it at some point, please let me know when. Louise, microphone is yours giving you opportunity all right thank you pastor uh it's been an emotional time that's for sure and we thank for god and there's been so many individuals that have sent their condolences to us and uh it's been from all over the world no and uh i'm trying to find them here but I thank everybody for being part of this program. I thank the family for the opportunity that they give us to, 
just remember a little bit about who our father was. And I want to just especially thank those that took the opportunity to, to remember who my dad was uh, through messages. I'm trying to find them right now. Uh, give me a second. We've got... We've got one here, it's in Spanish, but it says, thank you for all the condolences on all of the photos as Jen is saying, I wanna start in the, in the family, um, Guilarte. It says, our condolences to the family Capote. No, it doesn't matter how close or how far you are. We're always remember Juan and the love uh, that he gave simple if he is always we're always grateful for what he did for us and we sent our condolences and a great hug to all um, they're all in spanish so i'm translating for you right now it says um one here that we wanted to talk about is that uh, janet was talking it said that dad wanted to really uh, talked to my daughter, but after Junior got, uh, he talked to Junior, he started shaking and he wouldn't be able to um, anymore, but it's always good to know he always had everybody in his heart. And there's so many individuals that, that love my dad. It says, uh, Deborah and the family in Edmonton, dear Capote family, we wanted the beautiful funeral service that you had for your, for your father is it touched us very much to be able to be a part of it even though we are so far away thanks for sharing the moment with so many of us we will continue to uplift we will continue to uplift the whole family with our prayers and we are blessed by watching it it was so beautiful that service that we had the opportunity we also have the condolences from the rivers family there are many precious memories we will forever cherish. We look forward to our, to our glorious return of our creator. We will again be reunited, our deepest and, symp and sympathies for the family. We also have one. Um, and I'm trying to go through it. It says, Pastor Robleto. Uh, and also his wife sent a video with a special music. Uh, uh, there are so many individuals that really have said so many things for us. Um, and we're so grateful for those, but those are the only ones that I have for right now. So thank you so much. Uh, I know that there are several of the pastors that had contacted us and we want to really thank you for what you've done for our families. And thank you for thinking of us at this time. So, Pastor, I'll give you the time back. Thank you, Louise. Now, before we hear from pastors and hear other presentations that were sent, I wanted you to see...
Wow, so many memories. And thank you again for sharing. Now, before we hear from pastors, the grandchildren have recorded a special scripture reading. So right now you would have an opportunity to see, to visualize it, and to hear it dramatized. No se turbe vuestro corazón. Cree en Dios. Cree también en mí. En la casa de mi padre muchas moradas hay. Si así no fuera, yo os lo hubiera dicho. Voy pues a preparar lugar para vosotros. Y si me fuere, y os aparejar el lugar, vendré otra vez y os tomaré el mismo. Para que donde yo estoy, vosotros también estéis. Amen. All right, and right now we want to invite Pastor Pedro Rodriguez, one of the first pastors here in Windsor, that was Juan Capote's pastor, to speak and give the words of tribute and words of comfort to the family. Uh, friends, if you turn the speaker view, you would be able to see not just the mosaic gallery, but you would be able to zoom in and see Pastor Rodriguez. I am ready. You're on. Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Um, I met Juan first in Cuba. Uh, our churches were not far away, so we saw each other from time to time. The first thing that I knew about Juan is that he was a missionary man. He was a man of God, always preaching always spreading the gospel. Uh, for, for a while, we went to Costa Rica. Uh, we were together in Costa Rica for a few months, let's say. I, and he always was the, the missionary man that I met in Cuba. Then he traveled to Canada. He traveled to Edmonton in Alberta. And uh, what I know is that in Alberta, he uh, was instrumental, he and his family were instrumental in planting the Spanish church in Edmonton. When I went to Canada a few years later, he already had moved to um, Windsor. And there uh, we started, well, he had started already, but I joined him in um, trying to uh, plant, uh, to make relevant that little group. And um, that group, that church, has gone through different periods. One time, sometimes up, sometimes down. But what I can say is that one never gave up. I think the existence of that church in Windsor uh, is, is one of his legacies. The legacy of one not only is in regards to uh, his missionary work. I compare him to John the Baptist. And I have a little point that I want to re read a moment. And uh, uh, it's a comparison between him and John the Baptist. Because the Bible says there was a man of God whose name was John, which in Spanish is Juan. And then uh, I uh, just got that idea uh, that we have the privilege to have this other man of God whose name is uh, one. Well, uh, but then when we met in Windsor again, um, one thing that I didn't know about Juan was his, uh, uh, the kind of special relationship between him and his wife. Um, I tell you, he, he, they are an example for all couples that are married. Uh, they were so in love, as Louis said before, in good times, and in bad times. They were always in love. They were always together. He was also a family man, not only honoring his parents, but also uh, guiding his family, uh, his wife and uh, the three kids. I didn't know, I, I wasn't with him when he got the grandchildren, but I know that he has been a good influence for his grandchildren also. And the other thing that I want to highlight about uh, Juan is the fact that he is a man of a million friends, as Janet said before. Um, he had that uh, capacity, that gift given 
by God to make friends everywhere, to be the friend of everyone. And uh, in his missionary work, of course, that is a blast. Um, so I am so um, moved today um, because we are celebrating his life and his legacy. Of course, by doing this, we comfort one another. And as I said in my prayer, we uh, are here also for uh, the purpose of um, reaffirming our hope in the coming of the Lord. Uh, as, uh, like, like John the Baptist uh, was the forerunner of uh, the first coming of Christ, I see my brother Juan as a forerunner, as someone who is a herald, uh, preaching, announcing that Christ is coming again. So, having said that, uh, I, well, I just would like to greet my, my friends, Luis, uh, Janet, and Alex, and also tell them how much we love their dad. And now, this poem that I wrote is in Spanish. You're going to bear with me. I know at this moment, many of the people who are here uh, speak Spanish. And also, I'm going to post this poem tomorrow uh, in my uh, Facebook page. Uh, so it's called A Man of God, Un Hombre de Dios. Hubo un hombre de Dios que se llamaba Juan, heraldo precursor que anunció la llegada de Jesús el Señor. La Biblia nos relata de aquel Jesús, de aquel Juan, el Bautista, quien ferviente llamaba al arrepentimiento a los que lo buscaban. Fue nuestro privilegio conocer a otro Juan que anunció el evangelio, salvación en Jesús y su pronto regreso. Hermano Juan Alberto, siempre sirviendo a Dios y con brazos abiertos para servir al prójimo, estaba siempre atento. Junto a su amada Isa, ejemplares esposos, con lealtad indivisa, demostrando el amor si había llanto o había risa. Lo que Juan predicó y practicó en su vida, su legado de amor, nos motiva e in, motivan e inspira a servir siempre a Dios. Buen padre, buen abuelo, amigo de verdad. Hoy estamos de duelo, pero no es un adiós, es solo un hasta luego. Ya pronto ha de sonar la trompeta de Dios y hemos de disfrutar por los siglos eternos a nuestro hermano Juan. Mientras llegue al final y a Jesús predicamos, hemos de recordar y seguir el ejemplo de este hombre de Dios que se llamaba Juan. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, I, with all my heart, I wrote this, uh, these lines because this is what I feel. He's, a, he's, like a, he's like a forerunner for the second coming of the Lord. The way, the same way John the Baptist was the forerunner for the first coming of the Lord. And he's inspiring. Everyone who knew about Juan, who met him, is an inspiration to me and I know for everyone. God bless you, dear family, and Christ is coming soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I wanted to invite Pastor Daniel Reyes, if you would unmute yourself, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, I want to I wanna give... Uh, my deepest condolence to uh, the Capote family. Um, on behalf of uh, Damaris and on behalf of all my family, um, we, we lived in Canada for around seven years and um, it's still in my heart, uh, all of these good memories, even when uh, we live in, in Toronto, uh, but we were very close and, and thank you for this invite and uh, it was uh, very, uh, very hard, very tough for me not being able to say bye to Isabel, Isabelita, and, and Juan. And I, I, I was struggling with that for a while because I, a couple of times I tried to reach Juan and uh, to say, hey, how are you doing? And it was not possible. And uh, knowing what happened a few days ago was, uh, was pretty, pretty hard. Um, and then uh, watching the, the funeral service in the cemetery, 
that brought me a, a lot of relief um, listening uh, uh, his children, uh, listening uh, other family members uh, telling all of us stories and uh, it was very helpful and you know um, I have so many memories and I remember one time and all of that came to me um, after listening uh, that service that you, you have at the middle of, of this week that is coming to the end. Uh, I remember one time um, that one said me, you know, Daniel, uh, God uh, doesn't want me to be rich. Uh, uh, he always um, share the things that he was doing for business and he was related with um, a story on how he wanted to start a, a business very close to, to Windsor and how he missed that opportunity, how somebody came in his place. And I remember that, uh, that he said me, but uh, bringing all of that memory, I think that Juan was a very rich guy. He was a lot of richness. And as we have been enjoying through all of these pictures, uh, I think one of his riches was his love, the, the love that he and Isabel, when I say Isabel, I, I say Juan, when I say Juan, I'm saying Isabel, uh, because for me, they were in, the, in a perfect unit. And I think that that legacy is not only from, for uh, his children, it's for all the people, all the people that uh, knew both of them. So I think uh, maybe God, in material things, as using the same word of one, he, he, he didn't make him rich in that aspect, but in the other one, I think it, it was amazing. His parenthood, uh, the way uh, as a dad, uh, as, a, as a grandparents, his friendship, um, we we are here all weakness about weaknesses, uh, weaknessing uh, his friendship. Um, the many people that uh, um, connect with 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 them, uh, with, with him. Uh, when we came from Cuba to Canada, we left behind our families. We left behind our parents and siblings and all of that. And having one, uh, having the familia uh, Lara. Uh, in Windsor, uh, that was our place when we retreat uh, many times in, in one house and, and, and we found that uh, longing that we have for our homeland, for our family, that was uh, Juan. And, and he was a pure Cuban. Uh, it doesn't matter how many years he, he, he lived uh, in Canada, he never crossed to United States, but he always was a pure Cuban, a, a, a patriot, um, keeping his root, and, and I really love that. And as well, his character. Uh, we have been talking all about that, uh, uh, his personality. Uh, he always uh, happy and uh, dreaming and thinking about uh, doing some um, new things in, in, in business or in work. And, and I think the another things that made him so rich, as we have said as well, was having Jesus Christ, uh, having the gospel, having uh, not only living that love uh, for uh, his wife, his, his family, uh, his community, but as well having that passion uh, and that love uh, uh, for Jesus. So as I close uh, um, this intervention, I want to use Revelation uh, 14, 13, that for me reflects that legacy of one. And I hear a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work. And I think that one work very hard for their good deeds, follow them. I'm glad for the life of one and, and, and uh, I will keep living as well with that legacy, with that example that he set for my life. 
and I'm so grateful and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Reyes. Pastor Kosovan is here with us. And so I wanted to turn microphone to Pastor Kosovan. Pastor Marion, there's so many. We've got over 85 people, so please unmute yourself. Thank you, Pastor Kosovan. I'm just totally speechless just to tell you how sad I am to know that my friend uh, Juan passed away. On behalf of uh, the Kosovan family, my deepest condolences to all the Capotes. Juan was my very close friend, you know, often as a pastor. Well, I can say he started me uh, on going camping in Ontario. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I didn't really camp before uh, I met Juan. But then he said, uh, Pastor, there is false reserve conservation area. And I'm saying this to you. Uh, that was his favorite spot. Um, and the first time I went camping really in Ontario was with uh, Juan and, uh, and of course the Spanish church. And uh, he was just uh, a close friend, always encouraging, always positive. Even when we discussed some difficult things, it was always uh, sincere um, and always siding on the side of grace, always siding on the side of grace, full of love full of energy you know he was he could he could have been my father you know based on our age but sometimes i thought he had more energy than me and uh, i will miss him forever this is like losing my father and uh, i can just think of one bible passage that uh, summarizes his life and that is and by this they they will know that you are mine if you love one another by this they will know i think the greatest theology of juan and it was mentioned already before by previous pastors that he made friends with everyone connected with juan immediately from day one the handshake the and i was probably the first you know the first experience of uh, pastoring a spanish church and uh and not speaking spanish <laughs> but he said don't worry just come we'll translate this is this is all good come over and uh and we connected not only because both of us come from the communist background you know both of us were you can say suffered out in communism so we we often had quite a few jokes about it and uh he especially had a good laugh when i drove my lada around windsor and uh but it was nice to connect with him so may god bless you all the capotes formed wonderful friendship with all the children and uh even to mention that i'm here in victoria is because of uh, it's alex's fault <laughs> alex's fault so uh capote is the closest to my heart i thank you guys for the years and we'll continue you know every time i look at alex every time i look at uh, all, all of you children I will think of your father and you have a wonderful legacy. Continue, continue that legacy of transparency, love and hospitality because that's what made him rich. That's what made him uh, a leader in the church as well and a leader in his community. So God bless you and uh, we will miss him, miss him. Uh, but Jesus is coming soon. Encourage each other. He's coming in this world with all its beauty. It's passing away. So these are my words of encouragement. God bless you. And thank you for the privilege of uh, joining the service. Thank you, Pastor Koswan. I will turn the microphone to Pastor Garcia right now. Yep. So, evening everybody. On behalf of the Capote family, also, and we like we would like to um, the Garcia family would send its condolences um, to the family, and um, 
we are global for everybody who took time from their day to day to come and show support also to the Capote family. From time zones we have here, from East Eastern time all the way to Pacific time countries, Canada, United States, uh, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, we thank you all for being here, showing your support. When I friends her, I got there August 2014. My uh, mentor was uh, Pastor Kosovan here to receive me. Same with uh, Darren John. When I at, uh, at the Walker U-Haul, and um, to know the city. And when I first met Juan Capote, he took me out and the was to uh, Winter Palace, Wyandotte. It's an, uh, it's an airbrush restaurant. I found out later that he really enjoys that type of food. And we just connected there from day one. A Couple of months later in the month of October, I had almost a, um, an appendix rupture. It was around like two, three in the morning. I was alone in, uh, in my room when I was feeling the pain. And um, since I didn't want to bother anybody, I just got out and I walked all the way to the hospital from uh, Ulet Riverside all the way to uh, Hotel Dieu. Um, the Spanish church at that moment, they basically all chastised me because I didn't call nobody that I should have called them. doesn't matter what time. I'll never forget the, the punishment that I got. That was a nice welcoming. But uh, Juan didn't want me to be alone. Like, who's going to take care of me since they had to operate me, took away my appendix? Uh, my wife, Rosemary, was still in Cuba at that time. I still didn't really know anybody. I just knew uh, Pastor Kosovan and um, in the Spanish church. And so Juan basically uh, took me into his house. And I remember I was in his house for, um, for about a month and a half. For a month and a half, and I really got to know him well. Uh, basically 24-7 with him there with him, his beautiful wife, Isabella. And living in there, um, he was truly a man of God. And he didn't care how much he made or anything. All he cared about was sharing. And literally everything he had in the house, uh, he shared with me. It, it literally became a second house. And so uh, that was a very fond memory of him from the beginning because he didn't really know who I am, who I was. But he still just said, doesn't matter. He needs help bring him to the house. And so I'm very thankful for that. Also, one of the last memories uh, my wife and I have of him was um, basically with this whole pandemic thing, it, it was kind of hard um, for Miguel to, to try to enjoy life. Uh, always being cooped up in, inside the house. He would get his little uh, tantrums now. And uh, we decided let's get one of those bikes where you can uh, place uh, a child on it. There's a, like a child seat on the bike in front. And uh, we said, well, let's get one, but we don't have room in a little Volkswagen. And, uh, and Huang said, you know what? Let's go. Use my van. And we're like, but are you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah this is my van. And I just remember just being in the van with him, just talking to him. He was just still so full of life, still cracking jokes, still giving advices. And it's true what Pastor Rodriguez said. The love that he had for his wife is unique. It was very unique, the love he had for his wife. Very admirable. But he will also get you in trouble. I don't know if uh, Elder Laura remembers this time. Isabella was very strict when it came to uh, what Juan would eat. And one day at the Spanish church, 
Huang desired so much just to have a little piece of cake. And Roberto and I, we were just there, we're like, okay, well, what do we do? Do I, do we tell, do we tell on him and tell his wife? Or we just, um, just let him, but then since we saw it, we, we, we become complices of this treachery. And um, I don't know, I had like some sixth that when he was going to do something, it's like she knew, she just like just came out of nowhere. It's like, wow. So this is how the second coming will be, just out of nowhere, a surprise. And she just came out of nowhere. She saw Huang just walking up the stairs, leaving the church with something in his hand. And she just ran. But by the time she got there, whatever he had was gone. So then she comes back down all furious. And she thinks that Elder Laura and myself gave him something, which I testify we did not give him anything. Let this be witnessed and recorded. We didn't give him, we didn't give him anything. But then she goes and she calls um, Elder Laura Lucifer. And she calls me Judas Iscariot. <laughs> because we betrayed her and all this. I'm like, well, the, interesting. We didn't do nothing. But Huang came back down all happy and smiley that he was able to have his piece of cake. And so um, Elder Laura and myself, we took the hit for him. That's how much we loved him. <laughs> but all in all, uh, my family, my wife, myself, we will really miss him. Uh, and our condolences to the family. Thank you, Pastor Garcia. I wish we would have more time. want to give opportunity for people for the open mic. But first, we're going to play a video from Pastor Robleto. Este canto va dirigido para los hijos de nuestros hermanos Capote, Alex, Luis y Janet. Este es un momento muy difícil que están pasando, que han perdido a sus queridos padres y hoy están recordando en memoria de la vida de nuestro hermano Juan. Quiero compartir con ustedes este canto que para el salmista David fue su fortaleza. Fue donde él encontró la fuerza y el auxilio en momento difícil. Y él lo escribió en el libro de los Salmos, el capítulo 121. Alzaré mis ojos a los montes. Alzaré mis ojos a los montes, de dónde vendrá mi socorro, mi socorro viene de Jehová, que hizo los cielos y la tierra no dará tu pie al resbaladero dice don mira el que te guarda he aquí no se adormecerá ni dormirá el que guarda a Israel Jehová es tu guardador, Jehová es tu sombra, tu mano derecha, el sol no te fatigará de día. Oh, 
guardará tu salida y tu entrada desde ahora para siempre. Amén, amén, amén. Perder a un ser querido es una de las cosas más duras que muchos de nosotros jamás podremos enfrentar. Para nosotros el hermano Juan no solamente fue un hermano en Cristo, sino que también fue un amigo, un, un hermano carnal y un apoyo en nuestro ministerio mientras estuvimos en Windsor. Siempre estarán en nuestros corazones mi hermana Isabelita, mis abuelos, mi hermano Juan, y lo único que puedo decir es de que sus obras con ellos siguen. Y muy pronto les hemos de ver junto al río, donde podremos disfrutar y conversar y nunca más separarnos por toda la eternidad. Luis, Alex y Janet, solamente les queremos decir que les amamos y que estamos con nosotros en estos momentos de dolor que están en nuestras oraciones y un abrazo con todo nuestro corazón y que el Señor me les bendiga y me les consuele y me les fortalezca siempre. Este canto que voy a cantar es un canto que siempre le canté a mi hermana Isabelita cuando estaba en su lecho de enfermedad y ella se sentía tan feliz y este, también este, lo canté en la iglesia estando el hermano Juan y él este, también estaba tan feliz de, de poder este, escucharlo. Así que voy a cantar el canto que se titula ¿Cómo podré estar triste? Entre sombras y sí, 
thank you. Now I want to turn the microphone right now to the guests. We have Elder Charles Shad from the Windsor Church who wanted to speak. And friends, um, I'm going to give some of my time, so I invite you to speak briefly, pre please. So Elder Shad, unmute yourself. And if someone else would like to say a few words, please send a short message on the chat or raise your hand electronically. Go ahead, Elder Shad. My condolences to the Capote family. And it is my privilege to say a few words on behalf of the Shad family in honor of my dear friend, Juan Capote. I still, I still remember the day when I first met him and his wife, Isabel. Pastor Roboleto, who was in charge of the Spanish church at that time, had asked me to preach since he was going to be away. And this is what happened. The day was March 20th, 2004. First time for me to preach at the Spanish church. At that time, the Spanish congregation they met at the Woodward Community Church just off of Walker. And uh, May, March 20th is also special to me because it's my son's birthday and I couldn't forget that date. But just four days before that, my wife Maisie had been admitted to the hospital. And March 20th, Sabbath morning, I prayed with her, told her I had to go and preach at the Spanish church. She wished me the best and left. Unfortunately, she, she never returned from the hospital. I did not know anybody at the Spanish church, but as I went there, one of the senior members, he saw me. I introduced myself. Then he looked at me and said, my brother, you look very worried and disturbed. Can I help you? It was the first time that a stranger called me my brother. Guess who it was? It was Juan Capote. It gave me strength. Since that day, we became very close friends. In fact, we became so close that uh, Alex can vouch for that. Juan Capote was born to Balimero and Jofifa Capote on November 14th, it has already been said, in 1947 in Cuba. And at the age of 21, he got married to Isabel. She was the daughter of Luis and Luisa. Now you notice that both of husband and wife had the same name because they were born on the same day, but not the same year. And that was interesting to me. They left Cuba with their three children, went to Costa Rica, and from there they came to Edmonton in Canada, in Alberta. But since Isabel's brother was in Barron Springs, Luis Hernandez. They wanted to be closer to them, so they moved to Windsor. And they moved to Windsor in December 1984. And I'm told when they moved here, they met a family, the Angel family, who were also Spanish, and they worshipped at the, with the English congregation, but did not know much English, and so couldn't understand much. So one suggested, he says, why don't we start a Spanish group? Let's start the Spanish church. So in 1985, the Spanish speaking congregation, congregation was born and because of Juan and Isabel Capote. In fact, he preached the first sermon. The founding members are four adults, five children. And they met in the room where the oranges were stored. Remember we, we used to sell oranges every year, every winter as it came along. So that was the room where they stored the oranges. But what happened was the company started growing and soon there were over 120 people. They had to rent a separate place to accommodate that many. I remember the time when Pastor Belletto and myself went to visit the Capotes at their home the visit went longer than it was intended to. And one excused himself for a few minutes. When he returned, he returned wiping his hands with a kitchen towel. So I asked him where he had been. And he answered, oh, 
just to cook something, we will eat together. Juan Capote was an excellent cook. Anyone who ate his cooking fell in love with him and his food. And there was no doubt about that. Then Juan said something to his wife in Spanish, and I didn't know Spanish, so I didn't understand it. But Pastor Rebelletto told me what he had said. He told her, go and cook some rice. She left. Within five minutes, the table was laid with the food Juan had cooked and the rice she had cooked. I thought that was fine, fast, you know. But uh, Janet told me that her mother could cook rice in a pressure cooker in three minutes. Juan and his wife were extremely good hosts. No one left their home without eating. They always had enough food on their table for an extra five or six people. Those of you who have been to the Spanish church know that they have potluck every salve. It was all because of Juan and Isabel. In fact, it was Juan and Isabel who established the potluck system in the Spanish church and that practice carries on. The Spanish church has gone through a lot of ups and downs. I remember the time when I first preached on March 20th in 2004, there were more than 80 people in attendance. I also remember a few years later when I went to preach there, there were only four in attendance. What happened? Where did they go? I was told that Windsor has always been a stepping stone for immigrants. And they come to Windsor, they stay a few months, and then they'll go away to where the jobs are. Did Juan Capote give up? No, he did not. He and Pastor and Roberto Lara, along with the pastor, worked hard. They encouraged members to return. Although Juan is now sleeping, his effort has left behind a large number of young parents with children who are now strong members of the Spanish Church. Most of the older folks, unfortunately, are gone. They're sleeping, awaiting for the Lord's coming. The year 2019 was the hardest for Juan. He suffered heavy, heavy losses. His mother, then his father, and then his wife. All three passed away the same year. Yet Juan was very, very strong in his faith. Yes, he was devastated, but never showed sorrow. One always encouraged his children, his grandchildren, to be strong in faith. Whenever I got a chance to talk to him, he always shared his faith in the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, in fact one day he said to me, my brother, I am ready to go and rest with my wife and my parents and wait for Jesus to come. Such was his faith. He always said, I know I will see them again. Juan was a true Christian, humble, polite, loving, tender-hearted, compassionate, and caring. He was soft-spoken and mindful of the needs of the people around him. He went out of his way to help others with cash and kind. His focus was on his children and grandchildren. He loved his church and did all he could for the growth of the church. He served the Spanish church in every capacity of leadership. Juan Capote leaves behind three children, seven grandchildren. Two of his granddaughters are already married. Juan Capote lives behind a church with young people, the parents, and many children who are active and loyal for the Lord. Juan Capote will be remembered for his love, his humility, his meekness, and his self-sacrifice, selfless sacrifice. Personally, I will miss Juan and Isabel. I will all I will always remember him. I will never forget him. And I pray 
that when Jesus comes, that I will be there to see Juan, Isabel, and the others. Rest in peace, my friend and my brother. Thank you, Elder Shad. I wanted to give an opportunity to Paula Rodriguez to say a few words. When I first met Juan Capote and his wife, they're cooking for the youth camp, and Paula and her husband were also working in the kitchen together. Uh, Paula, could you unmute yourself and tune in, please? There are over 80 people right now on the stream, so I'm, I know she's here somewhere. Paula? One moment. Can you hear All me? Right. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, we just want to say, Pastor, thank you for this space for all of us to share all these fun moments with Juan Isabelita. For us, they're uh, saying that everyone else, they welcome us um, when we came to Windsor in October 2007. Um, Pastor Robleto was here with uh, his wife, Marta and Martita welcome us the second day she picked us up the hotel uh, where we were and they introduced us to the women's group of the church and to uh, brother capote and isabel who became grandparents for us they really embraced us as a family one week before we met our, our car broke and he have three cars parking in his parking lot and he say come and choose which one you want to use he didn't know who we are he didn't have an idea if we he didn't even ask us for a copy of our driver's license he borrowed us for his car until ours was fixed and since then he just became uh or protector or mentor or or marriage counselor, grandfather. or grandfather. Uh, we uh, met Roberto and, and Martita, and same thing, we connect. We become family, friends, family in Christ, um, partners uh, of camping, cooking lovers. We share the same passion for cooking for work for our church and for our youth. And uh, uh, it's been a very difficult last two years. Yes, we are Christians. Yes, we have the promise of our Heavenly Father, but we were not created to die. So some part of our heart resists to this, right? When we say bye to Isabelita, that day was very difficult. Same to be in the funeral of the parents of Valtor Romero and, and the mom of, of Juanito. Uh, we spoke with Juan maybe one week before he passed. And there is few conf few phone calls we remember on the last months. And Juan, very clear to me was in December. We called him, we, know, we knew he was traveling. And we knew he went to Caymans and he was in Florida visiting his family, but we just wanna be sure, we, we wanna say um, that we love him and how he was doing. And he, that call, he was sitting in the beach by himself in Florida that day. And he told us he loved to go to that beach with Isabel. He felt she was there with him. And he told us he was doing good. He blessed us. He asked for the children. And he sent us all his love. And the last one called, he just said, I'm doing good. I love you guys. I just cannot wait until all this coronavirus thing pass. And you guys come over to visit me at my apartment the place uh, where I live in now and to cook for you guys. I want to cook this delicious Cuban food you guys love. My favorite. So that was the last phone call. He sounds well. And uh, this is all this has been very painful, very shocking. We treasured the moments we have shared in this earth 
and we're looking forward to meet him and Isabel again. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And for all our family, thank church, thank you. We love you all. We miss you all. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, friends. I wanted to invite you to see a video selection sent by friend of family, Christina Petrovich. at the responses here so many people would like to speak if we would be in person doing this memorial service we would go on for probably four or five hours uh, i wanted to give microphone to elder lara roberto lara they labored together all these years together in windsor spanish congregation uh, so if you could uh, go ahead please elder lara thank you Pastor. Uh, so a lot of things to say. Uh, I know I don't want to get bored with anybody, but uh, I know for a fact that uh, when I met one, um, it was by 1988 when I came here. But uh, the first family that I met it was Pastor Rodriguez with uh, her, uh, with the whole family. And then I met one with the whole family also. And um, little by little, we uh, got confidence uh, in each other. Um, we uh, get uh, to know each other so hard that uh, uh, I came in 1988, but my family came in 1992. So, by then we we got more closer somehow because my my kids also 
like uh, Brother One. In fact, uh, I think Brother One was, a, I didn't have a, a transportation by my own. He has a, a big van and um, he picked up, pick us up to go to church. Uh, like then we, we had to go to English church because we have no, no Spanish group, no Spanish church. Um, so when, when he came um, to pick up the first time, my kids, uh, all grown up, uh, they, um, they started to sing in the, inside of the van. The song in Spanish which says uh, uh, en el arca de Noé todos caben, todos caben. Um, my kids start to sing in in the van of Juan Capote, everybody fit, everybody fit. It's a song for kids uh, in a Sabbath school. Uh, but um, it was so popular that one liked it. Um, but then uh, um, our, like like I said our, our friendship was so strong that um, after that we started to go in on camping and um, we went everywhere uh, camping um, I mean everywhere here in, in Ontario in, in some areas in the area of uh, uh, Godrich, Godrich Place uh, many things we visited there so we uh, we make that like our tradition for every year, and and I would tell my my wife and his wife. I I would, I would tell my wife, uh, uh, God is great because you and Isabelita went so much, spent so much time in the water that um, the only thing you need uh, to realize it. Thank God you didn't grow uh, scales and, and fins and, and everything because you like so much the water. But um, uh, <clears throat> it, that's a uh, stop when when we got more older. But um, I remember once when we we talked to Pastor Cosmo how to go camping. I think he never went camping, and uh, we took him to. Uh, God reaches the, the the falls, uh, fall conservation area, and he loved so much that place that he started going by by himself. Um, but um, we uh, we went once to uh, uh, Dominican Republic for one vacation. Um, he won he wanted us to go uh, some different places, but. Um, Unfortunately, that um, couldn't be possible because we didn't have money. So, nevertheless, we uh, went um, so many places, uh, uh, and we enjoy uh, our uh, friendship together. So I really, really gonna miss him when when we start church soon because he was uh, my right hand and it's gonna be tough for me going without him. So I I only ask God for uh, condolence for my brother Alex, Luis and uh, Janet too, because I know they, they've been good they uh, show good friendship to us too. Thank you, Pastor, and God bless to all my wife. Thank you, house. Elder Lara. My no. wife, my wife, my wife wants add something too. All right. What I'm gonna say is, one was the brother. Prepare for us here when we move to Canada, and as the Bible says. The friend has to be, has to show his friendship to all of them. And there is a, a friend is better than a brother many times. And that was one for us, her best friend, him and Isabel, and we're going to miss him. 
miss them dearly until we meet again. And I know we are going to be all in the behavior forever with Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, I will be brief. I will not preach long. And we're going to turn to a song. But I want to just to share a few things. You know, whenever I would go visit Capote, I would see pictures of beautiful places or he would be watching on TV different places. I know he loved to travel. I'm sure there's no better or more beautiful place on earth than Cuba for Juan. But think of this, friends. Children today read that scripture from John chapter 14. Jesus saying he is going to prepare a place that where he is, so we may be also. This is one of the most frequent and relevant promises read at time of grief. To highlight that beauty of the promise, uh, Paul says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, Paul is quoting prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 4, but with a slight adjustment. Isaiah said, for those who have waited for him. Juan both waited long time for the return of Jesus because he loved him. Yet there is more to this promise, friends, than just human halfway reading the Bible for cliches only, because Paul continues, God has revealed to us through God's Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things. You see, friends, no eye is good to see what God has prepared. All the seeing eyes cannot pierce through to see, but the Spirit, the comforter that Jesus promised to all who wait, love, and believe. It is that Holy Spirit that is coming to stand by, that Spirit that gives us sight to look forward with the hope of that beautiful place prepared for us. And see, I wanted to focus, friends, on that. Because in that upper room, when Jesus got together with disciples for that final talk, where he told them, do not let your hearts be troubled. He was telling this because he was also telling them that I will not leave you orphans. I will send you the Holy Spirit. And so, friends, I just invite you, read those three chapters, not just one, but three chapters, the Gospel of John, chapters 14, 15, and 16. And look at those promises of Jesus where he is saying to you, family, Louise, Janet, Alex, I will not leave you orphaned. I will come to you as comforter, as Holy Spirit. As much as you've lost your father here and your mom, and you're suffering and you're feeling orphaned, remember that the Holy Spirit will not leave you orphaned. Right now, God is your Father, and Holy Spirit is watching over you, supporting you, giving you wisdom, opening your eyes. Friends, Jesus was telling this to disciples, reminding them, love me. You see? In verses 17 there in Luke 14, he says, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it cannot see him nor know him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Later in chapter 16, he would say, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. In verse 16, he says, A little while, and you will not see me. And yet a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Friends, I want to again remind you that at this time, it is in your hands to let your heart not be troubled. 
allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you. Allow the Holy Spirit to be that comforter. Because none of us, as much as we want to spend time with you and share things with you, none of us could give you that comfort that the Holy Spirit is able to give. And so friends, family, again, I'm appealing to Louise, Janet, and Alex. Please remember that the Holy Spirit is here with you, comforting you. Friends, I invite you to again look at the screen. We're going to sing a song together. As we are ending this session, again, I wish we would have more time. I wanted to turn to pastor who work lately with pastor, with elder Juan Capote. I've seen him on the stream. Leobardo Salas, pastor from Leamington. Is he still with us or has he left to attend to the Leamington Spanish church? Uh, pastor Salas, are you still with us? No, he has left. He was earlier with us. So, Pastor Reyes, did you stay to the end? Yes. Please uh, pray for the family at this time. Okay. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we want to say thank you for being together as a family in Jesus Christ to bring our support, our love, to Luis, to Janet, to Alex, to uh, all the family, and as well to our church, our brothers and sisters. Lord, thank you for the life of one. 
um, thank you for his legacy. And thank you for your promise that soon and very soon we will be gathering together and we will be with you for eternity. And, and Lord, thank you for your promise that you are the one that is able to bring comfort, uh, to bring peace, and above all, to bring hope that even uh, a lot of us were not able to say goodbye, we will see, the, we will see him again. And, and Lord, thank you for your promise that even though sometimes we have to walk in that valley of shadow and death, you say that you are with them, that you walk with them, that your rod and your staff will bring comfort. So Lord, uh, as we close the celebration of Juan, we are closing that now, but we know that one day you will be opening and we will be again together for eternity. And thank you for your promise to be with this family, with the, fam fam the Capote family every day, walking with them and being with them to the end of this age. So, Lord, thank you for being with us. And we want to end saying, Maranatha, Jesus viene pronto. Jesus is coming soon. Oh, yes. Oh, ven. Oh, come. Jesus. Amen. 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 Friends, thank you for joining. Even though you were not able to speak, but your presence is the ministry to the family. Thank you again for coming on this Zoom celebration. It will be made available. Alex, good to see you. It will be made available on the YouTube and on the church Facebook uh, shortly after we edit and polish and insert the videos properly. So again, thank you, Pastor Garcia, for facilitating, for ministering to the family. You've been there with them from beginning of this loss, walking every step so thank you friends again may god bless you as we part at this time till we see each other till we see juan at that glorious resurrection morning god be with you